Hi, this is Danielle, and you're watching Fly Girls Manifesting. I have a very special guest today. Her name is Abby, and I don't want to flub up on what she does on her channel. All I'm going to tell you is that if you're trying to create your most best beautiful life, you have to go to her channel. But I would like for Abby to tell us exactly what her channel is about, and then we'll get right into the video. Yes, it's about neuroscience, self-concept changing, Neville Goddard. So basically, I like to incorporate a lot of different teachings and fuse them into one to kind of show how it's all working and to simplify how to change your life, how to change your self-concept and ultimately manifest and create the life you want. That's perfect. Okay, so today's topic is going to be your inner conversations and how that's going to shape your reality. And I know from my standpoint, I have pretty much changed my life when it comes to how I view myself. Like the things that I was saying about myself when I would go out into the world and then come back home. And it was just, they were not good. Hmm. The things that I was, you know, assuming about myself. So I would like to know, Abby, can you tell the audience how you feel about self-concept and maybe give us an example of how inner conversations in your personal life maybe have played a part in reconstructing your self-concept? Yeah, totally. I mean, they're really, to start off, they're everything. <laughs> they're, it's very simple. Yeah. And yet the most powerful thing you can do is, is really, you know, not only change the inner conversation, but really the first step and the most powerful one is to start becoming aware of it because when yeah. you start becoming aware and starting to listen to what is actually going on we have between 60 and 80 thousand thoughts a day so 90 percent of our thoughts that we are thinking today if you're not really paying attention they're your thoughts from yesterday so you just basically a lot of people re are recreating yesterday they're getting frustrated why isn't there changes yesterday is today and you know obviously we know how that goes because we've all been in ruts and that sort of thing where we just want out but when I think that when you start shedding light on your inner conversations and realizing, oh, I'm actually thinking these things and that's what I'm seeing outside in the reality, maybe the call's coming from inside the house. I'm going to look mm -hmm. out and blame people, but I'm actually thinking that maybe I actually think that. And when this person reflects it back to me, I'm frustrated by that. And one objective way to see uh, how inner conversations can change your life is once upon a time, I was a world-class athlete. And so that's my background. So it was really easy to see changing self-concept and in inner conversations in that way, because it was, you know, non-emotional, right? It's like make the higher mark, lift the higher weight kind of thing. So the one thing was, is when I was trying to make, trying to make the 2008 Olympic team. Mm -hmm. And um, basically I had to be that version, think that version, move in the, you know, in the ring and in the weight room as that version who threw that mark. And I remember hearing it, I, I don't even, this is probably 15, 20 years ago. Somebody said, I, you know, I'd pick up my bag as the 60 foot thrower. I'd move in the world as a 60 foot. What would the 60 foot throw? You know, that was a big threshold mark. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh yeah, okay. It just like really blew my mind. Like I'd never even thought of who I would be and how I would feel doing that mark. It's like, I thought I would magically do the mark and then I would know how to feel. Mm -hmm. It's a Newtonian way of thinking, not a quantum model, which is how you're thinking and how you're feeling is essentially picking out what version of you you'd like to try. Just the same as you went in a closet and you're like, what shirt do I want to wear? Well, how you think and how you feel is what's going to select that version. So the inner conversations are, you know, how you're calibrating what version. So having that before you, you don't get to the 60 foot mark without being that person first. So that yeah. was my first introduction of, oh, I have to start thinking and feeling it and having the conversations ahead of the mm -hmm. actual externalized experience. So yeah, it, it really shifted my life. And that's one thing. And I ended up making a world championship team because I changed my inner conversations because I stepped up to that version of myself before, you know, the external world um, you know, was shown, was seeing that really. Mm -hmm. And I have a question for you um, in doing that. I'm, I'm so amazed that, okay, so you're an athlete, right? At heart. Mm -hmm. And I'm a musician at heart. Oh. So I used to be in the marching band. 
-hmm. And I remember um, having to study hours and hours of sheet music. And um, there were some people in the band that just could never get the music like within a couple of days. I could always get it like spot on Mm -hmm. because the notes, I would visualize myself like the notes, like my fingers. I was so connected to my instrument and and knowing what I could do. I I played the piccolo and the flute. And um, what I want to ask you is also, did you, do do you feel like visualization played a part in in doing that as well when it comes to maybe um, outside of you actually doing the action? Were you visualizing yourself maybe um, at home or something like that? Yeah, a great question. And yes, it it plays a huge part um, because it's like, you know, the, the internal um, conversation, it's very mental and that's, you know, in the science aspect, it's the electrical, you know, thing you're sending out. Mm-hmm. Well, the visualization, you can tap more into your body, which is your unconscious mind. So the feeling aspect of it. So I do feel that those two are inseparable when it comes to actually using it in your internal conversation to change your self-concept, because through the visualization, you're feeling the experience already. You are feeling you know, on the field, playing the music in your brain, literally forming new neurological pathways. So your brain's like, yep, I'm ready for it. And you're like, I haven't actually done it, but your brain's already been there because you use your imagination so vividly, which Neville Goddard, that's, you know, feeling is a secret, you know, the, the power of your imagination, Joseph Murphy as well. They just talk over and over about that because it's so powerful. Most people, you know, we do use it, but we use it in the, um, you can say negative, but the detrimental aspect where you're visualizing all the mm-hmm. bad things that could happen. You're nervous about this person responding poorly. You're nervous that X, Y, Z, you haven't heard from a person and oh my God, what if blah, blah, blah. You're using your imagination and your yeah. body is actually experiencing that. You're sending out stress hormones. I, I believe the human is the only one who can think of something and actually signal stress response in the body, which you're like, Mm -hmm. oh my gosh. And starting to be aware of like, if you know, if you knew you were taking a little tablet of stress every time, like Mm -hmm. if you had an external in your hand, you'd be like, oh, I don't want to do that. That, That's going to hurt my body. It's going to make me think fuzzy. I'm not going to be able to focus Mm -hmm. on talking about. It's taking me away from my goal and keeping me in this life I don't like. Yeah, well, we're doing that every time we're, we're thinking and feeling in that other way. So yeah, visualization is a huge component to it. And I would spend a lot of times I would have uh, note cards of words that would mean something to me. And then I would sit there and just, you know, I'm trying my best to feel it. And mm-hmm. yeah, it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to try to feel something you've never done. So there mm-hmm. is no secret, you know, you can ask people for advice and doing your own experimentation with yourself in whatever you're wanting to experience is the biggest thing you can do is just start trying, see what it, see what it is mm-hmm. and how it, how it feels for you. I agree with that. And I will tell you that what I also do now is for anyone who's listening, if you want to test this out when it comes to your inner conversations and your self-concept is to imagine someone giving you a compliment on something. Mm just consistently you know your self-concept who you believe you are is you knowing that whenever you meet someone whenever you talk to someone it's not only how you see yourself it's how you think they see you Mm -hmm. so what is your perception of yourself and what do you want people to think of you and whenever you're having inner conversations about anything you should really practice the conversation I do this all the time with my husband and if he's listening, I don't care. <laughs> um, uh, I, you know, I, I practice this with him, like a specific fruit that I like that I know he never brings home. Mm. I'll just practice in my mind that he's bringing it home. But guess what? I also have a self-concept of myself that my husband loves and respects me and treats me like a queen. That is that is a self-concept that I have. So in my head, if I rehearse conversations with him, most of the time within a couple of days, he'll bring it randomly home. And I'm like, see, this is how I know that your self-concept and your inner conversations, they can influence your reality. I know that. And going back to you being an athlete, I'm telling you something that there are studies on how the brain works 
where they have a group of people who practice in their mind and a group of people who actually did the physical action of whatever the sport was. And when they test the brain activity, it was the same activity. So what this tells me is that you can actually influence yourself inside of your head with who you believe you are. You're an athlete. That's your self-concept. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a musician. That's my self-concept. And what am I saying? What am I doing in my mind? What am I visualizing? What am I saying? Mm -hmm. And guess what? You can actually influence things that go on in your life based on your inner conversations and your self-concept. Yeah. So I I truly believe that. And um, I just want to say one last thing. And, you know, because I could talk to you for hours. (laughs) Um, Abby, she's amazing. I know on your channel, you talk about the subconscious mind. I noticed that. Can you just give us some lasting um, morsels about how you feel the subconscious mind plays and when it comes to reprogramming your self-concept? Yeah. So by the time you're 35 years old, 95% of your life is run off your subconscious. So you've got this internal program, like a computer program, even your phone has a program, right? An operating system. So And also you have these things called implicit memories. So that means basically something happened to you X day, like under 10 years old, maybe somebody told you, maybe somebody told me that I wasn't a good athlete. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And actually I'll just give a specific example, like more about creativity. So I identified as I'm an athlete, but I'm not very creative. So in my subconscious, even though that happened when I was really little, Mm -hmm. I'm basically it's an echo, or you can think of it as a song that keeps playing. So even though, have you ever been around and like something's noisy, but you block it out because you no longer hear it? That's Mm -hmm. essentially subconscious. It's something you can't no longer hear because it's running, but it's running and it's influencing everything you do because what essentially it's doing is you're seeing it through the lens of that. So that's a limitation in terms of success, a limitation in terms of I'm not lovable, but you're not going to look into the world as it is. You're going to look into the world as you are. And if it's been a wound, you're going to see that limitation. So in terms of your self-concept, your subconscious is programming that. So your self-concept can only be as broad as what your self-concept, uh, your subconscious allows. So one way to do it is like you talked about earlier is like, well, how, what experiences are you seeing in the world? Are you getting something where somebody keeps rejecting you or you're getting something where, uh, you know, no one's listening? Well, then you'd be like, well, when's the first time that I experienced that? And basically mm-hmm. what you're trying to do is bring that unconscious memory to consciousness. So you can re-reason on it as an adult, but yes. And as long as you have those subconscious um, programs in there, you will be limited on the true expansion of what you are. Cause really that, that thing that happened in subconscious, it's not true. It's just what you took it to mean. Mm-hmm. And it's not a, it's not a true limitation. It's only the limitation that you're giving it permission. Like Neville Goddard says, whatever you give permission and consent to be true, it's true for you. So yeah, starting to look and see what you're giving permission to limit you. Cause really, if you let all those anchors off and let go of the limitation, everyone will rise. We're naturally abundant. We're naturally gifted and, you know, beautiful beings. And we have these things that are anchoring us down. So yeah, I think both of our, our goals are to help people snip those cords so they can be free and, and really live their best, you know, truest life. Yeah. And I agree. So what I'm going to do is for sure, anyone who is interested in Abby's information, because I'm going to tell you your life is going to be blessed. Mm -hmm. And she gave a perfect example on how the subconscious mind is connected to your self-concept plus your inner conversations. If there are any questions that you have, I'm going to ask you to leave them down in the comments. And I'm going to link everything to her channel. You will be blessed. I promise you. Go over, visit her channel, stay there, subscribe. And I hope you guys have a wonderful, blessed day. Thank you, Abby, for blessing my channel. Absolutely. And I will talk to you in the future. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you.